Have you ever taken a great landscape shot and then you get home and look at it, but there's this weird little spot in the sky? Or you take a picture of a friend and right as you snap that shutter, somebody has walked into frame right behind them and it's slightly distracting within that shot. Today in the Lightroom Whisperer, we're going to talk about the Remove Tool and the Healing Tool and how they can help you in your photography. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get right to it. Before we get started though, did you know that in real life you and I could actually work together to improve your photography? Whether that be remotely from the comfort of your own living room, joining me around the world at any of the amazing destinations that I lead small group workshops, or even creating your own one-on-one -on -one like we're doing here. Light Source Journeys, helping illuminate your photographic journey. For more information, check out the description below. Now let's get to it. The healing brush and the remove area are all going to be hidden underneath this little eraser over here. And there's three different tools within this. You've got a clone stamp, you've got a healing brush, and you've got the remove tool. The clone stamp is the original one of these. That's taking an exact representation of the pixels and then a source area and just duplicating it. So if I go here and I click in the sky here, it's going to sample an area over here and it's trying to replicate this exactly. So if I drag this source area, you can see it replicating now the tone in the sky where it's covering. Or if I come down to the land, it's just taking the pixels from there and putting it up in the sky. Now, the healing brush is kind of a variation on this, but it's melding those pixels together. So if I click healing brush instead of the clone stamp, and we do that same thing, let's stamp over here and drag that down here for our sample area. It's now melding the pixels between this area and the blue sky together, trying to give us this kind of compromise between the two. Now there's different applications for each of these, and we'll get a little bit more into that, but after you've laid down these, if you go back to one of them and click on that center point, it's going to now reactivate that specific filter. So even after you've laid down other ones, you can go back and readjust. So if I need to move this, I can. Or if I need to move my sample area, I can. And then if I need to go back over to this one, I can do the same thing. I can go and move this around. Or if I decide I don't want that one, I can get rid of just that individual one. Since it's the only one highlighted, I can either come over to my panel and hit the little garbage can, or just by hitting the delete or backspace key on the keyboard, it'll poof away and evaporate into nothing. Now, one thing you need to be careful though with the healing tool. If you're trying to get rid of something really close to a defined edge like this, and I go and I click right here. You have to really be careful because it makes this weird haloing, this blending effect really close to the edge, and that can look pretty funky. So in this case, this is not the best option. If I had dust really close to the horizon here, I might have to go in and try that remove tool. And we're gonna go into standard kind of landscape shot. Now this is a nice landscape, but I can definitely see in the areas, especially in that upper corner here, let's zoom in, a few little kind of gray spots. And these are dust on my sensor itself. So I can come in here with my little band-aid chosen, my healing tool, and I'm gonna go over that spot and I'm gonna shrink down my brush to be about 10% larger than that spot. And I'm gonna go ahead and click it's going to sample an area near there and it's going to try to get rid of that dust for me, which in this place it did really well. Spots though could be a little difficult to see sometimes. So I'm just going to zoom back here from my navigator back to fit. And on the bottom of the panel for our healing tool, I'm going to go down to visualize spots. Visualize spots changes this to a very high contrast black and white. And if we ramp up this little guy here, we can see all of these circles that are popping out in the sky are dust. Even ones that you might not have been able to see very well with your naked eye really become exacerbated here and it allows you to go in and remove those. Just like we did before, I'm gonna go over that little one and shrink it down to maybe about 10% larger and click and do so with all of these. So I've gotten all those ones that looked very apparent. I'm gonna go and turn off my visualized spots. And if we look at the sky, it's pretty clean all the way across. 
Let's go to a different shot now that is a bit of a scenario a lot of people will run into. This is a shot that I took in Mexico City. And in this area, every night of the week, there's people practicing dancing, whether it be just two people or an entire class. Here, if we zoom in in the very back, we've got somebody that is kind of intruded in the shot here a little bit and taking away from that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over to my remove tool again, and I'm going to this time click the actual eraser, the remove. Now, this is a fairly complex area back there. If it's a tiny little area and it's not too complex, we can leave off this use generative AI. Now, in this case, let's just zoom in so we can see a little bit better. I'm gonna leave on that generative AI, and we wanna make sure to get him and maybe a little bit on the outside of him. And if he had a shadow or anything coming into there, we would wanna make sure that's also getting covered on this. Now, he doesn't really have a shadow being displayed, so I'm just gonna make sure we get rid of him entirely. And when I let go, it's not getting rid of it yet. It's showing me the sampled area, and it's allowing me, if I needed to, to add or remove from that area. Now, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit Remove. And then it's going to take a second. And it did a really good job at getting rid of him, but it gives me three different choices to go from. Down here, you see one of three with variations. And if we click through these, you'll see that background change. And we can look for one that looks more natural against that background. Now that one actually looks really natural, but if for some reason that didn't have one that uh, appealed to me, I can hit generate again down here and it'll give me three more choices to go from. Now that one though, I think looks good. If you didn't watch me do that, you'd have no idea that happened. And in this case, I like that. I think that we're uh, good to go here. Let's just go back and see the entirety of the shot. Close that up. Boom. And yes, now it is just our dancers there enjoying their night. Now, another way that we're going to use this, almost the same thing, but a little more complex. Here in Zion, this tarantula was drawing quite a bit of attention from the tourists. We can see this couple here focusing in with their point-and-shoot cameras, trying to take a shot. But here we've got an elbow of somebody. We've got a full person right here. And we've also got his friend kind of hidden behind our main subject here, but with his leg, his arm, and his other foot poking out from behind her. Now, in this case, I'm going to go back and I'm going to use that Generative AI Remove tool again. Same kind of thing. I'm going to go in here now and cover him in a little bit into her elbow. It'll figure out the difference there. Make sure I'm getting all of him. Get his shoe. I'm going to come back up here, fill in all of those little guys, get his friend's shoulder and bring that down. And this is where it's going to differ a little bit. We're going to make sure we get the feet in there still. But now, when I let go and it says my selected area, I'm also going to go and I'm going to add. After clicking add, I can come back in and now add his foot to this. And if I wanted to, I could go up and add this elbow, but I'm going to do that in a second stage. So let's go ahead now and say remove. We've added that second area and see how well it does at identifying what we want taken out versus what needs to be kept in. Now that did a pretty remarkable job. Let's go through though and see what these variations look like. I like that a little more, but we kind of have a stump coming out of nowhere, maybe hidden by some bushes. But let's see what the third looks like. That looks pretty natural. In fact, I don't think you'd be able to know that that happened if you didn't watch that. But let's just generate again and see what else it decides to give us for options. Now, it deletes the first three options that you had and just gives you the next three, which this one I like a lot. That looks very natural. I think that's going to be the one, but let's just check and see what the other two variations are here. Ugh, not a fan. Too bright. What's that red thing? Same kind of thing. I don't like the way that gap kind of draws the eye there. Let's go with this one here. And now I'm going to do a second remove. We're going to pull this guy's elbow out of it over here. And just like before, making sure it's all encapsulated, hit remove. And now we're going to have a second area that this is working on. And once again, that looks pretty darn good out of the box, but let's see what else this has here. 
I think I like that first one again. It kind of makes a shape that draws you into the entirety of the frame. And now we have nothing except for the couple that is focusing in on our tarantula here. Now, when it comes down to it, I personally don't use Clone Stamp very much, especially since the world of the Remove Tool Generative AI came around. So here I have a building, and this building looks pretty cool, but I have a vent that is in the place of one of the windows. Now, the Clone Stamp tool is going to do an exact representation of the pixels from where you stamp it to where you're actually putting that sample point. That's what I want to get rid of here, so if I go ahead and click there, it's going to try to find a place to sample. And if it chooses wrong, like in this case, this little light is kind of a giveaway. If we look there, you can see that replicated. I'm going to grab the area that it chose from, and I'm just going to drag it to my own location. This is a little bit kind of cleaner of a window up here. And you can see those lines. I just want to go ahead and line those up so everything looks the way it should. Now that looks good lined up, but you can see that kind of circle around the outside. That's where the feathering comes in. The feathering is the blending from the actual mask or the filter here to the outside. And this is going to allow me to kind of create a more natural look across there. You see that we have feather in two points. Up here is the next brush that I'm applying. This one is the current brush that was just applied. So if I go and I ramp up feathering here, you can watch that circle as it starts to blend disappear. And right now that looks pretty darn natural. I think it is a little bit off center. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to nudge it back over a little bit and try to find that line. I like that. I think that looks pretty good. That's the clone stamp, and that's probably the tool you're going to use the least out of these three. The remove tool with its generative AI is very handy, and it was game changing when it came to this program. And over the past year or so since they added it, they really refined it quite a bit. The healing tool, though, that little band-aid is probably the most common. Almost everybody's going to have dust on their sensor. Often, especially when you're shooting landscapes, you're shooting at those high apertures, and that really makes that stand out much more. So odds are good about 80% of the time, that's the tool you'll end up using in there. As for today, though, that's about it. From the Lightroom Whisperer, keep on Lightrooming.